Okay, welcome to part two. Here we go. We're going to be talking about the reactions with metals and acid. In part one, we were talking about the reactions with water and and metals, or metal and water. And in this one's going to be about acids. Let's get into it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is such a classic experiment. Okay, so we've got. Um, I don't know why I've written that there. Let's let's take that away. We're going to use sulfuric acid in this example. Sulfuric acid. Any guesses for the formula of sulfuric acid? Three, two, one. Yes, well done, H2SO4. Okay, now we are going to fill each boiling tube up with two centimeters cubed. So as you can see, it's all the same amount of sulfuric acid in each one. The only thing that's different from each of these boiling tubes is the metal itself. Everything else is the same. Okay, so what can we see? Just have a quick look at what's happening here. Which one's the most reactive? Why would you say that? Very good, very good. Did you say that because we can see fizzing of bubbles in the magnesium, we can see a lot happening here. Zinc, quite a few bubbles. Iron, not really that many bubbles. And copper, there's absolutely nothing. Now remember, copper on the reactivity series list is below hydrogen. So that's why if you actually did take copper and put it with some acids, um, it would not react. It's not very reactive with with this, and that's why it's not reacting with the hydrogen that's inside sulfuric acid. Brilliant. So what we can do is we can make a little summary. If you had to do this experiment, you can make a little summary of what's happening in each of these boiling tubes. So we say that the the fizzing is something that you observe. So you need to use this word fizzing. You, you can say that is vigorous, vigorous. Okay, it's, it's like reacting, it's like going crazy. It's, like, um, it's going vigorously. If we had to light uh, the top of the speaker, it would make a popping sound. Okay, and that's because the hydrogen. That's because the hydrogen that's releasing. Um, sometimes uh, people say a squeaky, a squeaky pop. Okay, and if you had to feel this um, this test tube, it would be very hot. Okay, over here it is sort of a steady, it's not vigorous, it's a steady uh, reaction. There is fizzing. <coughs> Excuse me, there is a squeaky pop as well, just like me. A squeaky pop, and this one's not that hot, but we can say that it is warm. Say, uh, l let's give some um, some pointers or some observations. It's a slow reaction. This one, there is fizzing. Um, it forms this sort of pale green color as well. It's important to note that with these ones, these are are colorless, colorless, also colorless. Yeah. Okay, pale green. Uh, this one also becomes a bit warm. It's not. It's not hot, and there is no change in this last one, as we explained. So that is a reaction between four metals and dilute sulfuric acid. Now, if you think about this, we could design. If this one's hot and this one's warm, this one's warm. Um, we can actually do an experiment, and we can see well, which one raises the temperature the most and we can set it up an experiment just to give you one more keyword that if a reaction happens and it gives out heat it's called exothermic gives out like exit the building go out this gives out heat and that's why it gets warm it's an exothermic reaction so let's talk about that next reaction what we could do is we could set something up like this okay so let's do some labels this is a classic experiment that you'll see in many exams polystyrene cup you've got your classic thermometer you have got some dilute acid this time we're going to use hydrochloric acid and um, we're also going to tell you what the concentration is it's important to keep the concentration the same so we can use one mole per decimeter cubed remember this is the the unit of concentration don't forget that and we're going to measure the exact um, amount that we're going to use in terms of volume we'll use 50 centimeters cubed and I think that's got everything. Oh, of course, and the metal. 
we're going to put a metal at the bottom here. So we can use um, powder in this case, and I'm going to explain that in later chapters why we use powder. It's actually so that we can increase the surface area so we get more of a reaction. So we can now do this separately for each metal. So let's start with number one. We start with magnesium. Okay, so we've got magnesium, and we are now going to measure the temperature. So what happens here is we, before we put the powder in, we take the temperature of this, of this, of this hydrochloric acid, this dilute hydrochloric acid. Okay, so let's say we've got the first metal we're talking about is, is magnesium. And so we can make a little heading here. Let's make a little table. How about we make a little table? Okay, so we've got metal. And what we've got here is we've got the amount of the metal, um, so let's say the mass, okay, so we can weigh this and uh, let's just give it 0 0.24 grams and then we can say the initial temperature. So this would be before you put the metal in. Obviously, if you put it in, it's going to start the reaction. It's going to start giving heat. So we can say here for this, for this last column, the max, remember temperature in degrees Celsius, so the max temperature re reached. Okay, so before the experiment takes place, the, the, the temperature is 18 degrees Celsius. This is like a classic room, sort of close to room temperature, which would be around 20 to 21 degrees. And then we do this reaction. We pour this powder in, boom, it goes inside. There's a crazy reaction. There's fizzing. It's vigorous. This is magnesium. And the temperature starts to go up. So this little red thing starts to go up. It starts to go. And the maximum temperature it reached was 40 degrees Celsius. Then we pour everything out, we clean, we take a brand new polystyrene cup, but this time, instead of putting magnesium inside, we put our second metal, which is zinc. So we get our second metal, zinc. Now it's important to understand this next point. I'm using more mass for zinc, but remember that these two metals have different molar masses on the periodic table. So this, this is why I'm using more mass here. If you think about it, what I actually need to be doing here is I need to be using the same amount of moles for each of these metals. Now remember, moles is equal to mass over molar mass. So the mass is going to change, but the amount of moles for each of these metals will be exactly the same. Initial temperature, 18 degrees Celsius this time, except that it only gets up to about 26 degrees Celsius. Then we do it for iron. Uh, for iron, we're going to wear a little bit less mass, but remember the same amount of moles is going to apply, 18 degrees Celsius, and this gets up to about 22 degrees. And then we do it for copper, and copper we get the same amount of moles as well, 18 degrees initially, and what happens after is it is exactly 18 degrees again which proves that there's no reaction so this experiment proves that magnesium is the most reactive metal with with dilute acid most reactive metal okay boom let's get that nice and bold this will be our conclusion from our experiment that is pretty much it. Let's just do a quick summary of everything going on in this module. Remember, this module is all about reactivity. Now, let's do a summary. Summary. Reactivity, uh, we'll do water and, 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 and metals. Okay, cool. So we've got two different experiments here. The first one is cold water. Okay, just water, normal water out of the tap, plus, plus your metal. This is going to form a, a metal and go back and watch this one. This is what was with, um, with calcium, metal hydroxide, that calcium hydroxide that form. And of course, we form hydrogen gas. Now, if you use water, but this time you use steam, in other words, hot water um, and a metal, what do you form? Can you remember? We formed a metal oxide and we also form hydrogen gas. Beautiful. Now, if we talk about acids and metals, we use dilute, uh, dilute acids. We are going to form the following things. Okay, metal. First one, metal 
plus an acid is going to give me salt and hydrogen. And the second one we can use a particular type of, of, of acid to just be a bit more specific on what type of salt you're going to make. This is sort of like the, the general formula. Metal plus uh, dilute hydrochloric acid, HCl. You actually form a chloride type of salt like sodium chloride. If you had to use sodium here, you would form sodium chloride and you would also form hydrogen. And if you use a, a metal and you use dilute H2SO4, in other words, um, sulfuric acid, you will form a sulfate. So if you had to use copper and dilute um, sulfuric acid, you would form copper sulfate, which is a type of salt, it's a blue salt. You guys have seen it before. And you obviously form hydrogen as well. All right, that's about enough from me. That was the part two of acids and metals. Go and check it out, rewrite, do the summary, and I'll see you in this week's live sessions.